Our CA Hoop Summer School Series presented by Ticket Smarter continues today with the head coach of the Drexel Dragons, Zach Spiker. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. First of all, how are you doing and those around you, kind of like in your inner circle and family during this uh, coronavirus pandemic? Hey, Bobby, how are you doing? Good to see you. Um, certainly uh, incredibly uh, challenging times for all of us. Uh, our family is doing it as well as possible. And uh, some days better than others, obviously, but uh, we're enjoying the time uh, in general to, to kind of, for me personally, to be around a little bit more with, with no impending travel around the corner or recruit coming to campus. Uh, much more time uh, at home with our family than, uh, than any other year before that, uh, in, in the coaching profession. So uh, trying to take advantage of that and, um, you know, just spend time with, uh, with our family. Speaking of family, Coach, if there is a brighter side to all this, like you said, spending time with your family, what have some of the other maybe things you've done during this break that maybe you wouldn't have done in the past? Was there like a new favorite show you got into or a book you read or, or any events like that? You know, our guys love to watch anything uh, that's uh, of the extreme adventure or, uh, you know, something funny like uh, the Holy Moly show has been pretty popular with our guys or uh, some different shows like that, but um, you know we, we've done some fishing as a family uh, and been able to do that at, uh, in a regular year, uh, maybe a day, <laughs> maybe um, it's something you talk about and you never do. So some of those things on that list that you talk about and never get to are uh, we're getting to, uh, and it's been great. You know we've got three boys uh, that are seven nine and 11 years old and uh, so they they can be into a lot of different things at different times and uh, certainly we're doing different things at this point in the summer with the pandemic than we were when we started but uh, it, it's it's been good to be around for sure absolutely well let's uh, talk about the coaching aspects and some of the challenges you faced uh, during this off season with COVID-19 well, I think anytime um, you can't have people on campus, recruiting is our is is the lifeblood and lifeline to any program. And when you're unable to go see people, and people can't come see you. Um, you have to adapt and adjust and be creative. And I think our staff has done a really, really good job of that. Um, you know, we've been able to get um, a handful of commitments um, in the process and had to do some a lot of that work through the phone calls or FaceTime or Zoom, whatever's allowed at that point in time in the process. So um, like any program, I think uh, it evolves and you have to adjust with the times. And uh, we're doing as best we can with that. And we're excited about the guys that we've been able to bring in um, during this time, even though it was a non-traditional recruiting process. Coach, talk about adjusting to the times a little bit. Uh, uh, moving forward right now, what is the plan for your team uh, in regards to workouts? Have you been able to see your team, or do you plan on seeing your team anytime soon? And, and maybe talk about some of the newcomers that that will be joining your team once you get to see them. Yeah, well, we see them every week. It's just not in person. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Bobby, our, our team, um, you know, will be on campus very soon and uh, go through the proper protocols of, um, you know, whatever our medical staff deems safest and our guys feel the most safe uh, in terms of testing. And once we get through those pods and those groups, uh, we'll begin workouts. But, uh, you know, I'm not – I'm more concerned about the person than I am the player right now and uh, where they are mentally. Um, how they're dealing with their issue um, of, with the pandemic alone, uh, let alone um, the social justice um, issues that have taken place this summer. So that has taken up more of our time as a staff than, hey, I really think you got to work on your left-handed crossover step back or your finishes. Uh, I, I think we'll have time for that. And uh, I think anyone that's not investing in the person um, – Frankly, they're going to lose the player whenever that time is. So that's the approach we're taking. And, uh, you know, meeting with our team as a group, small groups, one-on-one -on -one individually, and just making sure that they're in a, a good space physically and mentally uh, wherever they are in the world. You know, we've got four international guys. So 
Um, and not that we all haven't been on a roller coaster ride, but the international guys really went for a pretty big up and down roller coaster about a month ago, uh, being told that they couldn't enter and then they could. And, uh, so we're excited that we're going to be able to get those guys back on campus uh, soon and, uh, and start the process. So. Coach, you spoke a little bit about it just now about the social justice. Uh, what have you and your team and the conversations you've had with uh, your student athletes in regards to the social injustice movement and uh, Black Lives Matter? Well, obviously, I think it's something that, uh, regardless of the demographic makeup of any team, I think needs to be something that is talked about and addressed um, so that we all, as a country, evolve and grow in the right way and respect uh, what's taken place and take ownership and what's going to take place in the future. So uh, we've, we've had conversations. Um, we have certainly a group text and we have Zoom calls. And like I said, I think it's about the person and the relationship that we have with those guys individually. We can encourage them. So encourage them to, to do what they feel is necessary. And, you know, people – react and handle things differently, but they should um, make their voice heard in their way. And it might be individually, it might be publicly, it might be, you know, virtually. Uh, but I just want our guys to feel supported and they know that, that we support them and their views and, and how they're going about things can be different. Uh, but we tried to uh, have different speakers come talk to our guys on Zoom, um, talk about different topics, uh, read some shared articles. Uh, I, I do think we've, I know that I've grown, I can't speak collectively of our group 100%, but I know that I've grown a lot and evolved in this process and um, have had my eyes opened. And, and I think it's been very healthy. And uh, I hope it has been that for everybody on our team. And uh, I think we will be in a much better place um, as a program or as a country, however you'd like to label it, um, when we're all back together and, and running in, in a normal situation. I don't want to limit it to a movement. Um, I, I think a lot of people have said, hey, this is a movement. And I think my personal fear is we get to Labor Day and people ask, how was your summer? And, oh, that was unfortunate. Or I remember when that happened. Mm -hmm. And... I don't think it should be just that. I think it should be something that goes with us um, for forever. And that uh, there was a lot of um, things that have happened for a very, very, for hundreds of years. And this needs to happen for hundreds of years. Um, not to even out because it's what's right. And it's, it's the humanity piece. And it's not a political, hey, are you right or left or whatever's going on? Are, are we humans and are we, are we treating everybody with the respect that we all deserve and everyone deserves to be treated with? So uh, in particular, is the black community treated with the respect they deserve to be treated with, which they have not been treated with for many, many years. So um, I, I did want to just stop there. I don't think it can be just a movement. I think it needs to be a way of life. Um, so it could be a weekend. It could be an era. It could be a time. I hope that, uh, we look back and this is a, a significant moment um, that goes beyond a movement and that changes how we all think of uh, as human beings for the black community. Absolutely, Coach. And obviously the, the CAA and the rest of the support around our conference uh, really agree with you. And, and now as uh, we turn our attention to basketball a little bit, how, how will your team – look different this year than last year, Coach? Well, we had some new guys, certainly, and we're excited about getting everybody together. Uh, but how will we look different? You know, I think some of the uh, some of the names and faces will be the same, but I, hopefully we look different because of what our guys have done individually. And, uh, you know, you, you talk to James Butler, Zach Walton, Cam Winter, and, and guys that have been big producers for us, Mate Okris, uh, really came on strong late in the season, and uh, they, they're they all working really hard wherever they are, and uh, that doesn't overshadow other guys, but those guys were productive for us last year, so when you say, how do we look different? We look different because we've got a lot of guys back, 
And that's probably different compared to the rest of the league where there's a decent amount of turnover and, and transfers and things of that nature. So um, we might be unique because we don't have as much as that uh, of that taking place. Uh, but, Bobby, I, I'm excited about everybody coming back uh, with some motivation. And then we mix in some newer faces, uh, some younger guys that I think bring some energy and, and unique skills um, that hopefully complement uh, what our veterans have. And Coach, you just mentioned it about the league. Uh, talk about the CA landscape and how it's changed for the upcoming year. Well, you talk about the league. I, I, this, this this league, I continue to be amazed that, you know, from, from year one coming into the league to, to now going to year five, guys like Jarrell Brantley, uh, Justin Wright Foreman. Jarrell Brantley, I don't want to say he almost got a triple-double last night, but I think he had 13-6-4 and four in an NBA win uh, over the San Antonio Spurs for Utah. And, you know, that's one example. So I think our league is so good. Nathan Knight, Jarrell Brantley, uh, Grant Riller, uh, to name a few, J Justin Wright Foreman, just during this small window of time. And uh, all those guys. That doesn't even mention Devontae Kaycock, who's been on a – been on NBA roster the entire season. So I think the league is incredibly competitive. Um, it's played – the games are played at a high level. Um, it's, it's a really well-coached league. And uh, I think that, um, you know, that's the beauty that we get to sell and recruit kids, that they get to come be a part of a league uh, like this. Um, you know, other than I think the, the last NBA draft we had, which seemed like a long time ago, we had two players drafted, right? Uh, the American, zero, right? Uh, the Big East, one, I believe. And you talk about get outside the, the Power Five conferences, and, and we're right up there with the West Coast, who had two players from Gonzaga drafted. So when you start to really break down, look at the Atlantic 10, zero. So, you know, those are markets we want to compete with. And this is a great league, and it's a high level, a high brand of uh, – a great brand of basketball to watch. Uh, the players are prepared uh, and they're put in positions to be successful. So um, that's why we're excited about um, bringing back some veterans. Cam Winter, uh, as we mentioned, uh, certainly can play multiple positions. Uh, Mate Okris uh, has, has done some things at multiple positions for us. And then Zach Walton is a matchup nightmare um, at his best. He can score at any level on the floor. And then James Butler has been a motor that uh, is really hasn't stopped. He's a horse that, that, that runs at the high level and uh, is very consistent for us. So, and then you factor in younger guys like TJ Bickerstaff, who um, by his standard probably didn't have the year he wanted, but he, he was a freshman. And uh, I think he's set to really make a big jump as a sophomore. And, and we had some younger guys that uh, – you know, that we're looking forward to, to having around from Atlanta, from uh, England, from uh, Wichita, Kansas, all players that, you know, Xavier Bell, Lamar Oden, Amari Williams. Uh, we even grabbed a, a local product in Luke House who's transferring from a Division II school. So um, it, it's a group that we're really excited about. All right, well, head coach Zach Spiker from the Drexel Dragons, thank you so much uh, for joining us today and sharing your thoughts and, and everything going on in regards to the offseason. And uh, for you and your family, stay healthy. Same for your team. And uh, hopefully we see the Dragons back on the court sooner rather than later. Sounds great. Stay healthy, Bobby, and uh, look forward to have everybody at least watching our games if they can't be there in person this year. Absolutely. Thank you, Coach. No problem. We'll see you.